Hello, you're listening to a special interview episode of Popcorn Podcast with Lee and Tim, where we talk to the star of Florian Zeller's The Sun, Zen McGrath. I'm Timmy Fland, movie buff. And I'm Lee Livingstone, entertainment journalist. And we love to talk all things movies. Now, The Sun is Florian Zeller's second feature film and follows a family as it struggles to reunite after falling apart while navigating the highs and lows of mental illness. Peter's new life with Beth and their infant is upended when his ex-wife Kate appears with their troubled and angry son Nicholas. Peter strives to take care of Nicholas and be a better father than his own, but loses sight of how best to take care of his son. The Sun is directed by Florian Zeller from a screenplay by Zeller and Christopher Hampton. The Sun stars Hugh Jackman, Laura Dern, Vanessa Kirby, Zen McGrath and Anthony Hopkins. Now, we are reviewing The Sun in more detail, so make sure you check out that bite-sized episode. But ultimately, it's a film about guilt family ties and love that adds a compassionate voice to the discourse around mental illness. Zeller's 2020 film The Father won him the Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay and secured Sir Anthony Hopkins his second gold statue for his tour de four performance as a man suffering from Alzheimer's. And now the playwright turned director returns for the second film in his spiritual trilogy. So Popcorn Podcast has invited 20-year-old Aussie actor Zen McGrath onto the show to chat about his starring role as the pivotal son, Nicholas. It's quite the task given this film's subject matter and, and the sensitivities in bringing an authentic representation of mental health to the screen. A lot yeah. of weight on this boy's shoulders. Yeah, a huge amount of weight and responsibility. And acting also runs in the family for the McGraths, mm. with Zen's two brothers, Gulliver and Winter, building their own careers in film and television. Well, in this wonderful interview, McGrath shares some really fascinating insights into the process of making The Sun, from how he got into the emotional headspace of his troubled character, and equally as important, how he decompressed from that intense work once the camera stopped rolling. Now, McGrath also shares what a collaborative and generous director Florian Zeller is to work with, what he learned from veteran actors Hugh Jackman and Laura Dern, can you imagine, Mm. and the day he will never forget watching Sir Anthony Hopkins and Jackman act out their character's vicious two-hander. That's a good one, isn't it? It is. Oh, it is. It's stayed with me yeah. ever since. I can't wait any longer. Let's take a listen. I don't know what's happening to me. Zen, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with Popcorn Podcast today about a film that is really important for people to see this year in the sun. Congratulations. So tell us a little bit about your character Nicholas in your words what is he struggling with in the sun it's not important for the audience to know but it's something that the audience should know that it's never quite clear what he's struggling with it seems to be just endogenous depression and he seems to blame it on his parents divorce and he thinks like you see in the film he thinks that maybe going to his father's place having a shake-up of the environment will maybe fix the problem it doesn't end up doing that. And so it's it's sort of like this cloud hanging over him that doesn't know why or what's happening to him, which just adds to the distress that he's feeling. It's not quite as simple as what, what happened to him. It's just more about what he's going through at, at the time. The Sun is quite a complex movie as a result of that sort of grey area. What was it about Florian Zeller's story that made you want to play Nicholas that drew you into the role? When I initially read the sides, I instantly felt this sort of spark or resonance in my heart when I was reading his lines. I felt like it didn't take much to get me into the emotional state I needed to be in just from reading the the writing, which is credit to Florian. It seemed like a very important story to Florian. He says that it's not his story, but it's his truth, and he doesn't want to make it about him. I also felt like everyone involved in this project were involved in it because of a personal reason, and they felt that this story was something that needed to be told. And I feel like everyone either has gone through something really hard in their life, existential, or knows someone close to them that has. And everyone involved in this project, cast and crew, all sort of had that sense that this was something that needed to be told and something that would help get the conversation going, especially like post-COVID. And I know that I was separated from all my friends in Melbourne. We had probably the harshest lockdown in the world. Uh, And so 
I definitely draw on that as well. There's a lot of emotion at the forefront for Nicholas all the way through the film. Things that, like you've said, people will be able to relate to or see themselves in or, or have some sort of resonance with. But for you taking on this role, it must have been quite exhausting at times to get into that emotional headspace. Yeah, 100%. And I'm not a method actor. I like to sort of break it up in between takes and especially with roles as heavy as this. There are very few actors would be willing to sort of expose themselves to something like this for months on end. They are some of the best artists out there. It was such a heavy role that I felt um, I needed to break it up a bit and have a bit of lightness, especially since I was away from home. I hadn't seen my my mother and my brothers in a long time because they were off filming something else. That being said, there was one scene, the hospital scene. We filmed that over two days. The first day I tried to lighten the mood a bit in between takes uh, by coming out of character. The second day I decided it would actually be easier in between takes, just blankly stare at the ground, stay in that headspace or just listen to Florian and that's all I would do because it was too much to go in and out of that all the time. And the strategies I would use to sort of shake it off a bit when I got home was I would like to watch The Office, The American Office. Um, don't worry, I've also watched The British one. I was um, going to pull you up on that, Zen, because I'm yeah. <laughs> glad you said that. I don't need I to school you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, I watched The American one because it's just lighthearted and it's not too difficult to think about when you're watching. I made a thing of it. I had to get through all nine seasons throughout the shoot. So I would go home and do that. I'd also play video games with my friends um, online, which was basically how I was hanging out with them during the pandemic anyway. I can only imagine how important it would be to find the balance of finding the right moments to decompress. But then, like you said, to to stay in that headspace, which I can only imagine would be so difficult. Mental illness, while we're we're talking about this, of any kind is really hard to convey for anyone who has experienced it. And you run the risk of it coming across as like cliched or stereotypical Mm. on screen in film. How did you prepare for the role in finding the right level of authenticity for Nicholas? Yeah, well, I think I I had about three months to prepare between being cast and flying over. I had sort of weekly Zooms or more than weekly with Florian talking about his experiences and talking about Nicholas himself and really highlighting that he's unable to connect with his parents. That was the centre of gravity for the film was that father and son just couldn't, they couldn't connect or relate or talk to each other without there being some sort of thing in the way. And talking, like I said before, everyone's got people around them who maybe have struggled with something or themselves have struggled, having in-depth conversations with everyone around you. And my family, we, we all read each other's uh, scripts that we're going for. And we have a lot of conversations uh, with each other about that. And even going for walks and talking with Hugh or Laura about Nicholas and about what's happening in the world right now, I think trying to absorb as much of that as possible really helps. And I, I remember Florian also got me to research a poet called Arthur Rambeau. Um, I've always butcher his his pronunciation but he was a french poet in south of france i believe who wrote all his poetry before the age of 14 wow um about really dark existential stuff before becoming a weapons seller i think in like north africa for the rest of his life and he didn't write anything else after 14 and he's quite famous in france um but he wrote a lot of quite dark stuff and that sort of also helped me get in, in the headspace and yeah about trying not to get it like cliche i really really just tried to focus in on like the relationships between each character. I hadn't seen my dad, which is Peter, in probably months. And I've been getting frustrated with my mum, Laura, how she's at the start of the film. Like he's, he, he looked at me so mad with such hatred. I can't remember the exact line. And focusing on those and talking to each of the cast members about like what they think's going on. And we sort of had our, our own theories. And I think, yeah, just conversation is the way to do it. Yeah, I agree. Now, speaking of conversation, obviously you worked very closely with the writer-director Florian Zeller. What was he like to collaborate with on set? Florian is one of the nicest people I've ever met. He knew what he wanted, but at the same time, he was very open-minded. He would take advice from anyone, crew, cast, doesn't matter. If someone thinks something doesn't quite work or something would be really cool or work really well, um, he'll listen. And he's very adaptive. He's able to change on the day. And I, I know that like sets can be quite high-stress environments, especially if the scene is is high stress, but he was always present there and and able to adapt. And that's something I really admire. That's something I wish a skill I had is he's able to see the whole picture really clearly. Uh, right. And every time we'd be doing a scene, if I'd be standing somewhere else, I'd be like, wait, no, this doesn't work because of what's happening in scene 67. Cause he's, you know, obviously written it, he knows everything about it, but he has such a clear image of what he wants. And it's something I would one day love to be able to do. It sounds like you learned a lot 
from him and his and his process, which you'll take through your career. Now, one thing I have read about Florian is that he doesn't like to do rehearsal that much. Mm. Is that right? So he wants the actors to find a lot of themselves in their performances and in the moment. How did that feel and change your performance with that method? I feel like at first it was daunting, of course, because mm. you want to have like a safety net of some kind. What it ended up doing was creating scenes where the reactions were very raw. Basically, he wouldn't tell some of the actors that he was going to do something. Or in a scene in the hospital, when we were supposed to be filming the first take that was only supposed to be the first few lines, he decided to keep it rolling and to see where we, we as actors would take it, kind of like an improv class. A lot of takes were like that, where we just sort of kept going with the scene and it would, it would be like, you know, most of the time it wouldn't work because we'd be a bit confused about why, why hasn't they, why haven't they said cut? But sometimes we'd capture something really raw and something that like you couldn't quite capture if you thought about it too much because you're having a, just a raw emotional reaction or raw response, like whether that's like an eye twitch or like a, a little look you give, mm. but uh, it was really interesting. And I think, I think it worked quite well. Yeah. I mean, just to build on, I guess, how the film comes to a head, knowing that you as performers and actors weren't given too much sort of insight or direction. You had to feel that moment, you know, that just gives me a, a very different take on what played out at the end of the film, because I, I'm still, you know, spinning from it really. Like it was a huge impact for me watching the right. film really, really powerful you've been working with Florian and of course it would be remiss of me not to bring up Laura Dern or Hugh Jackman. What did you learn from such great veteran actors so early in your career that you're definitely going to latch onto and, and take with you? I would say that from like Hugh and Laura, who are obviously veterans, um, I learned that it's okay to be nervous, even the best. And this is something Florian said as well, even the people at the top of the game, the ones that everyone loves, Sometimes they don't know what to do and sometimes they can be unsure about their capabilities. And it was really sort of reassuring to know that even the best of the best, people I hope to be half as good as one day, sometimes second guess themselves and aren't fully sure. But I learned a lot of stuff. This being my first sort of um, acting as an adult, I would say, because it's very different from being a child actor where you could be a kid, play pretend, you don't have to think about it too much and you get away with it pretty easily. Um, whereas... With this now, I have to start making a lot of active choices. There's so much more to it than I initially thought. I was 18 when I was cast, so I was, and I'm 20 now, so I'm still quite young and I've still got a lot to learn. But even in the time between then and now, like a lot's changed and I, I carry all these experiences with me and I see it as like a great basket of knowledge I can use for my next project as well. And that's Amazing. all thanks to Marianne, Laura and Hugh. Now, speaking of a treasure trove of knowledge, you weren't in the scene with Hugh and Sir Anthony Hopkins. Did you get the opportunity to be on set for that short but powerful scene they, that Hugh and Anthony had together? Yeah, and that was an absolute masterclass. That scene's probably my favourite scene in the film between the, those two because it suddenly clicks what's wrong with the family and the generational thing, yeah. and especially with male, male mental health and like how there's just no communication there and you can see the parallels. And one thing I learned as well from filmmaking is the way they sort of set up the shots where Anthony's kind of looking down at Hugh and then Hugh's kind of looking down at me in the other scenes and watching yes. Anthony act as well. I, I wasn't too starstruck by most people, but meeting Anthony was a bit scary, making eye contact. It's like I'm about to be killed by a predator, but um, <laughs> you know, it's like a lion or something. You know, Hannibal Lecter. Exactly. It's terrifying. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was really cool to see that. And there are some real subtle details in that scene that I like can't believe a performer is capable of. And I just hope that someday I can be as good as that or half as good. I'll be happy with a 10th. Well, I can't wait to see where you end up in, in that world, mate. I think it's so encouraging to see how conversations around mental health continue to be represented in art more and more these days. How do you hope the sun will help the conversation surrounding mental health? Well, I, I just think it would be a success if people were talking about mental health more. I think, of course, the film leaves you with a lot of thoughts and some might find it uncomfortable to watch or uncomfortable to experience. It's an uncomfortable subject matter, but as long as people are talking, that's progress. That's one thing I'm proud of my generation and people these days is we're a lot more open with mental health stuff than we used to be. So I think it's just following along those lines of being part of the conversation and making it known that it's okay to struggle and it's okay not to know what to do. And you just have to know that there are people out there who can help you and there are people that do care for you. I could not agree more, Zen. In wrapping up, mate, I've really loved talking to you. I just want to know what's next for you. Uh, can you share what we might be able to look forward to to see you in? Nothing confirmed as of the moment. Um, I'm doing my own writing and my own animation stuff. 
uh, which I just like to do in my spare time in between projects. There's a couple of things that are maybes, but I'm not confirmed for anything at the moment. So I can't say, I'm afraid. You've practiced that. You, you rehearse, you know, you can't say too much because it's not <laughs> confirmed yet. <laughs> I have a tough four, but you know how it is. I can't, I can't say that. Of course. I think the way Jim Cameron's going, he'll blurt it out himself freely anyway. He's, he's quite open, isn't he, on the right, trail? Yeah. No, I wish. We'll see. <laughs> I'll manifest that for you, Zen. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, mate, thanks again. And all the best for the release of The Sun in Australia. And congratulations. Thank you so much. I'll catch you next time. You give these big speeches about life and then you abandon us. I have the right to reinvent my life. McGrath was such a pleasure to talk to, Lee. You get a real sense of how focused he was on ensuring he delivered an authentic and truthful performance as Nicholas. I personally loved hearing his experiences on set, working with Zella, Jackman and Dern, and particularly his impression of Sir Anthony Hopkins <laughs> and how in awe he was of him. And wouldn't we all be, yes, really? in awe and Zen says terrified yeah. right? <laughs> as well. If you enjoyed this interview as much as we love bringing it to you, don't forget to follow us on your preferred podcast platform because our Bite sized The Sun movie review will also be available to you. You can also find this interview over on our YouTube channel as well as interviews with Florian Zeller and Hugh Jackman. So don't forget to subscribe while you're there. We really, really appreciate it. Now, The Sun is in Australian cinemas from February 9. Make sure you check it out. And as always, friends, thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next time. We have a website popcornpodcast.com make sure you check it out we've got all our episodes up there for you to listen to if you'd like to get to know us a little better there's an about us section and we run ticket giveaways so keep an eye on the website for more information 